ever asked yourself that question? What do you really want? External validation. That to me is a false target. We know that when the collar comes out, so do the big guns. Hello everyone, Jesse Dawson here. Welcome back to the Jesse Dawson Podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for being here, listening, watching, whichever modality you've got going on. If you haven't subscribed already, do so. If you haven't followed already, do so. Today's going to be a doozy. I've got my polo on. It's a doozy day. We know that when the collar comes out, so do the big guns. I'm sure you've seen the title of this one already. What the fuck do you want? So what do you want? Ever, ever asked yourself that question? What do you really want? It's a big one. It's one you need to sit down with and, and dissect and run through. So let's do that. Once again, buckle in. The ride is about to start. I've got to work on my catchphrase. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious me. All right, so when we ask ourselves, what do we want? It's often because we hit a, hit a fork in the road. We hit, a, a, hit a, a barrier. Something happens, we end up in a dip, and we're like, why? what am I doing with my life? What do I, what do I even want? I don't even know. I don't even know who I am. All these questions, right? Because up until that point, we, well, you might have had a goal. Probably not. Maybe a half-assed one. Maybe you had a really good one and maybe changed your mind and you haven't reevaluate. But most of the time, 90%, when I work with clients, when I speak with my friends, people I know, ask them what they want, they say, I don't know. Because they don't even know what they want. They're just aiming blindly. Just shooting an arrow into the sky. You're like, oh, I might hit a target, I might not. And then they never even know, don't even know where they shot the arrow. So they can't even see if they've hit a target because they don't even know. Because they're aiming blindly. So, aiming blindly, as, as, we, as I just described there, is exactly what, how, how it sounds. It means you've, you've got a blindfold on, you're swinging the bat for the piñata, you have no idea where the piñata is, you could hit it, you could hit something. But it might not even be the piñata. <laughs> might be the completely wrong thing that you're trying to hit. You might end up hitting Nan, you know, taking out Grandma. And that's never a great story. Or accidentally conquering one of the kids. And that's even worse. Actually, I don't even know which one's even worse. They're quite, they're both just as bad. Could end up hitting one of your mates in the nuts. Oof. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, Gives me shivers thinking about it. Or you could hit the piñata. But there's a, more, there's a higher likelihood that you're not going to hit the piñata than that you will when you've got a blindfold on and you don't know where the piñata is or even if there is a piñata, you know? So that's what aiming blindly is like. It's, it's not knowing where you're going, so you have no reference point to be able to steer. You've got, you're driving on one flat road that's the size of the world, and there's no landmarks, and no lanes, no traffic lights, nothing, you're just driving. And you don't know if you're going west, north, east, south, you don't know if it's... You're driving in a straight line. You don't know if you're zigzagging. You don't know if you've crossed the bit you've already gone through. It's like walking through the jungle. Unless you mark the trees for a reference point, you don't know where you're going. You're just aiming blindly. You will be like, I swear I've walked past this tree before. And that, and that, yeah, I, I'm definitely going in circles here. And you don't know. <laughs> you might not be. You might not be going in circles at all. Or you might very well be going in circles because you can't figure out where to go. So you've got to aim blindly. You've got to aim blindly. You've got to not aim blindly. You've got to know where you're aiming got to know where you're aiming at. And then once you've decided that you're going to aim consciously, you're going to consciously aim, you're going to aim with volition, and you're not going to blindly aim at everything or nothing, or aim at false targets. That's the next thing you have to be aware of. So let's say you say, okay, cool, I'm going to start aiming at stuff. I'm going to start actually pointing my arrow and firing it into things, into targets. But you've got to make sure that those targets are really targets you want to hit. And they're not red herrings, you know, false a false target. Something that appeared in front of you that you think you want to hit, that you don't really want to hit. Or 
setting out a target that you're telling everyone you're going to hit and never reach it, or set, say, setting out a target that is not anywhere near the level you need to go and it's just an easy target to hit. So things like external validation, that's not a great target. That to me is a false target. That's a false target because it's not going to give you what you really want because you've got to find out what the fuck you really want. Not just the car, not just the house, not just the family. What, what do you really want? Like dig deep into it. Find out that, okay, you've got the car. Okay, you've got the house. Okay, you've got the family. Now what? Now what are you aiming for? Then what? That is where your target is. Because all of those are false targets. They're, they're the short-term gain. Even though they're a massive, having a family is a big deal. Like not saying that's not a small target or anything. But once you're there, then what? Because you can, you can start a family, have a family, but then what's next? You can't just, what happens when your family, your kids grow up and then they, they move out? Then what? Then what are you doing? What, you, you end your life? Like, what do you do? What, what, what's after that? So that, that to me is, you know, that's a, that's a milestone to the target. Even though I don't think you can really ever hit the target, just for the record. But you want to set a target that is far out and somewhere that you can aim for. That one, you're going to grow, but really is the reason you're chasing those things. So if you're looking for money, if you're looking for family, goals, cars, the external validation, the fame, fortune, fucking anything... Ask yourself, why do I? What for? What purpose do I want this thing? What for? What purpose do I want the money? For what purpose do I want the car? Because it makes me feel like I've I've hit I've crossed off a boundary of success. For what purpose do you want that success? Well, I want to feel like I've accomplished something. For what reason do you want to feel like you've accomplished something? Because I want to be, I want to feel significant or feel like that I've, I I matter. So for what reason do you want to feel like you matter? And it might be because you want to feel like you're loved. Your target's to chase love, not to chase the car or the money it's not to chase the family because the family is something that you're going to end up using to lean on to go for your goals because they give you certainty and security and all these things like that they also give you an uncertainty but you've got to look at the bigger picture you've got to look at the bigger picture in your career what goals are you blindly aiming at there oh yeah I could do for a promotion or how about I don't know, you start your own business and you and you and you aim that. Or how about you aim for leadership team within your company or within? Right now you might be my age, you know, maybe you're younger, maybe you've had less experience than I have, and you just want to make it to team leader. Maybe that's your goal right now, to team leader, and then and then ultimately you want to make it to like a floor manager or a warehouse manager or something like that. State, national, territory manager, whatever. Right, Maybe that could be your goal. But for now, you know, you're aiming at the at the initial target to get to the big one. That's where you want to go. But then when you get there, then what? So you've got to ask yourself, what target am I really aiming for? And what false targets am I aiming for that aren't really the targets that are going to make me happy, that aren't the real things that I want in life? But a false target is better than no target. So start with something and work your way towards it. First off, figure out, am I just shooting an arrow into the wind? And then secondly, am I shooting an arrow at something that I can see, and is that what I really want? And then the next level of this awareness, I believe, is that you've got to know where you're shooting from. You've got to know where you're shooting from, where you are now. Because part of aiming blindly, part of knowing where you want to go, is knowing where you are now. So let's say you want to make it to manager. Maybe you want to make it to the leadership team or something, or you want to start your own business. All these things are, are great and will bring some sort of something into your life. Something will happen if you do these things, right? Good or bad. And you say, I want to be a team leader. I will go over that, that example of the kid that wants to be a team leader. It's working, bottom of the food chain, hierarchy, whatever you want to say. He's in the entry level, starting out, still learning all the things. He's been there maybe a year wants to go to team leader. That's that's great. That's fine. And then eventually you have to have into further management. It's good to know that yeah, that's where he wants to aim. But let's say he wants to be a team leader. He hasn't got a job. Then he needs to have a job first before he can start aiming for team leader. And that would be an equivalent of a false target or a aiming blindly. Because right now he hasn't even got work for him to be able to become a team leader. 
But let's say he has got the work and he, he, he is in the job. He wants to aim for a team leader. Okay, cool. So right now, in order for me to be able to hit that goal, what do I need to do? Who do I need to be? How do I need to behave? And he's to look at the current, present moment now. Say, okay, so I'm sometimes I'm late to work. Sometimes I uh, help out. I do really good work. I'm consistent with my work. I hit my hit my goals, my KPIs. And I can be I can interrupt people though during the day. So right now, that's where my foundation is. That's where my start my start line is. It's right there in the sand. That's where I start. So what can I do in order to get me to the team leader level? First off, I need to stop being late. Because that's not that's not the behavior of a leader. I've got to stop being late. I've got to help people as much as I can. Because a leader is about people, it's not about work. At the end of the day, if you're a leader, you're leading people. You're leading individuals and that's what a team leader should be. So I need to be able to help people and know how to communicate properly and work on my communication skills. I need to stop interrupting people so we can get our work done collectively. And if I am interrupting, it's got to be for a good purpose. And I've also um, got to keep standard of my work up so that I know that I'm showing the qualities of a leader. But you can't make that criteria up without knowing where you are now. Otherwise, you're like, yeah, I want to make a good leader, yeah, just give me the job. And just shooting blindly into the wind or shooting at false target. Because it's not a realistic target, it's not a real target, it's not really what you want. Or it might be really what you want, but you're not, a, you're not really trying to get it because you don't even know where you are. And you need to know where you are to get to the next level. And I mean, you might even be trying to get it while blindfolded, but all your energy is going into the wrong place. And that can really stump you. So knowing where you're at is a good way to be able to go to the next level. And then with that example as well is like, has he asked anyone if there's a team lead position available? <laughs> you know, things like that that are going to get you into those positions. You need to know where you're at. There might not even be a role available that's going to help you move into that place. It, it might, there might not be a business that you can move into to make you happy and fulfill you for whatever it is. I don't know, let's say uh, you might live in the city and you want to uh, breed horses and have a horse farm that breeds and uh, helps people ride horses. And I don't know, I don't know what they're called. Horse farm sounds like we're killing horses and I didn't mean that. A horse retreat? <laughs> I don't know what, thank God. Um, but you're in the city. And you need to travel all the way out in order to go to, it's called a ranch. That's what it's called. It's called a horse ranch. I recovered. Apologies, everybody. And uh, you need to go out to the ranch and that's so far away and it's really unrealistic for you to be able to aim at that target while you live in the city. So you've got to make some choices. You've got to know where you are so that you can eat. So you have to say, okay, so do I move out to then fulfill this thing or do I come to terms with the fact that there isn't one it's not not a it's a false target and i need to readjust the target that i'm going for which i wouldn't recommend that i'd recommend moving out to the the ranch because it's gonna fulfill you and it's like that it's like that with family it's like that in relationships it's like in your hobbies the gym you know i want to get to a certain weight or i want to lose a certain weight you've got to know where you are to start with because you can't just say oh yeah, i want to lose 10 kilos but not know where your 10 kilos comes from you have to know where you're at to be able to then make the next steps of the plan and any plan is better than no plan. Again, a false target is better than no target. But a target that you can clearly see and know how far away it is and which way the wind's blowing and where you need to aim from is a much better target than a false target any day of the week. A false target can, can go die in a hole. I've been, I've got this new shiny, very accurate boat that has a laser sight on it and it can tell me exactly where I need to aim to hit a bullseye. So I'm going to stick with that because that's going to do me a lot better. And now we know that you don't want to be aiming at false targets. You don't want to be aiming blindly because that's the worst case scenario because you're just shooting into the wind, wasting arrows, no idea where you're going. You don't want to be aiming at a false target that you can't achieve or that you're setting up to achieve a small, you know, selling yourself short and not going the whole way or setting yourself up with a target that is actually for the wrong reason. That's also a false target, as we're saying. So 
buying a car because you want to look good, but realistically it's because you want to be loved, you know, or you want to be, you feel like you matter or have a sense of progress, something like that, you know, those things are great. But you can do so many other things and buy a car to have a sense of progress or to, to feel like you matter. Those kinds of things. You can contribute to the world and that, that's a great form of significance and contribution. And then you need to know where you're going to be aiming from and you've established that. And now you know where you're aiming from. You know how far the target is. You know which way the wind's blowing. You know if it's daytime or nighttime. That one's pretty obvious because you'll be able to see with your eyes. Let's say you're, again, going for that team lead role. And you're that kid, right? So we're going, usually I'm talking about, you know, scaling a business. I'm going to go small this time. We're going to go team leader role. You're just looking to get into management. Lower level. You need to aim at that target ferociously. Like your life depends on it. Because you won't hit it if you just have one shot and give up. You need to aim and aim and aim and aim and fire and fire and fire. You need to run out of arrows. You need to craft more arrows. You need to keep aiming. You need to go and go and go and go and go. You can't give up. You can't just pack it in. Oh, that's it. Because then you know it was a false target. And that's how you know. Because if you give up on it, it's not really a real target, is it? Because a real target drives you drives you to be this what you really want this episode's called what the fuck do you want because what the fuck do you want like go for it aim and aim and aim and aim some more and go for the target with as much energy as you can ferociously with, with as much passion as you can because if your passion is not there it's a false target <laughs> right if you're not passionate about the thing that you're ferociously aiming at Aim for something else. Find out where your passion is because it's the wrong thing to be aiming for. It's a false target. Aim and aim and aim and aim and aim. And then keep going and keep going and keep going. And you've just got to keep aiming. And then you've got to ask yourself the next step. So is it one, two, three, four, five, five, step five? I don't know if these are steps, but you're aiming and aiming and aiming and aiming. Then let's say this kid gets the job, gets the role, team leader. He has a pretty clear indicator of when he succeeded in getting that role. Because he knows that that you know that's a very clear example of progress. That he's gone from entry level role into the team leader, the manager, floor manager, team, regional, whatever, whatever position it is there. This work analogy is very easy to use. So this person that's going for the team leader role, let's say they get it move into the role it's a very clear indicator progress has been made gone from entry level into that team leader role and then they have to ask themselves how much is enough how much is enough for me and they could have asked that, that, that before in fact you, you, you can start off asking yourself this which is a really good starting point and it will always change over time ask yourself how much is enough when I get to team leader how do I know when I've hit the mark that I was aiming for? So how do I know when I've shot an arrow at the target? I've hit the target. And it's stuck. How do I know when I've hit the bullseye? How much is enough? Do it, does it need to be a team leader of five people? Does it need to be a team leader of ten? Do I need to then be moving up and be aiming for floor manager, centre manager, warehouse manager, site supervisor? I don't know. What's the next, you know, what's enough? Because if you don't have an, an end goal either, if you haven't got a target that you're aiming for that has a def definitive goal, which can be good and bad, right? There's, 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 there's both sides to that. You'll continuously aim and aim and aim and aim and it'll never be enough. And you don't know when to stop. You don't know when to say, I've accomplished what I want. And then you get to, re you know, you get, at that point you get to go again because you never, you never really get there, which is fantastic. You need to know how much is enough so that you don't kill yourself trying to do it. So podcast has, you know, I've got a goal for what I believe is enough in terms of subscribers, in terms of views, in terms of whatever. Eventually, I'm sure that'll change as I go. But right now, I have a target that's it, that is an indicator of success, an in indicator of a win. And, then, and as I said, once you get there, you can then reevaluate and say, okay, well, what's next? Because there's always a what's next. But right now, aiming very specifically at a target. I know where I'm at. I know how far I've got to go. And I know 
my indicator of success. I know what I've gotten there. And how much is enough? When we are going towards a goal like this, whether it's a physical tangible thing like a team leader role, or whether it's to become a better parent, let's go a whole different way with it right now. Can't become a better parent. What's the indicator of a better parent? When do you get to say, I think I've, I think I've become a, a much better parent? Because that one's an ongoing thing as well. Like it always is. Everything's always ongoing. Well, wh- how much is enough? How many, how many, you know, points do you need to score? How many, how many? Do you shoot the basketball in the hoop. How many hoops do you need to score in order for you to say, I've made progress. I've achieved my thing. I've hit X. How much? How much is enough? When? What's the target that you know that you can say, I've hit success? How many points do you need to score in order to say, yes, we're here. Now let's double those points. Or is or are you really aiming for double the points the entire time? So how much is enough to know that you're not going to continue to slog your ass off to hit the target you're looking to hit? And then the ultimate question, if you were to aim ferociously at the target, have all of that in place, you know, how, what, what would be success? What would be enough? When you, when you pack the tools in and say, yes, we've done it, I've accomplished what I'm looking for, I'm a better parent, I'm a regional manager, I'm a global, national, you know, interstate manager, whatever it is, or I am, I'm running my own business, I now have 20 employees, 20 team members that we get to create amazing things. What is the indicator of success? So you have that there, done, that's all in. Then you have to ask yourself, you know, I've got to score 100 points, that's, that's where I need to be. Then, if you were to fall short of the goal, if you were to aim ferociously, aim with all of your might, everything you've got, you build, you get halfway, and then it all falls apart, and you fall short of the goal. If that were to happen, and you did not accomplish the aim of hitting the target, you aimed and did not hit the target, what's the bare minimum that you need in order to say, I was, I was, it was good enough? What's the bare minimum that you will accept? So you've got your target that you want to hit and the bare minimum. And anywhere in here is still a win. The ultimate win is here. Of course, that's the target you want to hit. That's when enough is enough. But what's the bare minimum that you're willing to accept? And if it was to go wrong, that you could walk away and say, I gave it my best shot. What's that bare minimum? Because you need to know that so that you know if you don't get there, you didn't fail. Because no such thing as failure, only feedback. No failures, it's only lessons, learnings, feedback. So what's the bare minimum that you would go? So if this kid's looking to get a team leader, is team leader the bare minimum that he's willing to accept? And maybe he doesn't get to national manager. Maybe he doesn't get to set floor, floor manager, or center manager, warehouse, whatever. Is team leader okay? Is he like, at least I made it into low, lower level management and that, that was the bare minimum that I was willing to accept. Is that the bare minimum? Or is the next level the bare minimum because on, on the scope of things? Or is trying the bare minimum? Like, what is it for you? For me, the bare minimum, I've, I've achieved the bare minimum here. I've put out more than one episode of the podcast. Um, I'm fine. I put out an episode. That's the bare minimum. So I'm I'm happy. If I stopped the podcast, which I'm not, I would be happy with the work that I've done and the, the, the content that I've put out. I'd be happy with that. I'm nowhere near the target, but I'm very flexible. So I'd be happy with the performance I've given and I can take that into the next thing that I was doing. And that then takes me straight into the next topic. The next last, the last point being that it's about enjoying the process. And that, let's say you did fall short of the thing. You fell short of the goal. You hit your minimum. Or maybe you didn't. Maybe you really dropped the ball and was like, yeah, it was, I was, it was a fake, false target in the end. Didn't really want to pursue it and I got stuck in it and I actually ended up hating it and it was terrible. We never got anywhere close to where we were aiming. But I learned a lot because it's still feedback. No matter what happens, it's still feedback. Or you did hit your minimum and you got halfway. You know, maybe you got three quarters. Maybe you almost got to the target. You're like, we were pretty close. You then move on to the next thing. It then becomes, okay, now what's next? What's the next 
level of the story, where do we go from here? And you ask yourself that question because the process is the journey. The next thing, even though you didn't hit the goal, still came with all of the learnings for you to take into the next thing. Even though you didn't hit the target, you fell short, maybe you did hit the target, maybe you exceeded the target, and now you're, what's next is, because you've hit the target, you've ferociously aimed and you got there, and you reevaluated. so okay, so now here, this is now where we're going. And now I've hit my bare minimum, I've hit my enough level, and I get to reevaluate what I wanna do, well, let's go to the next level with this thing, or maybe I want to step aside and we go on to the next thing. And that's the point when you can really understand that the process is what you enjoy. Not where you're going, not the goal, not where you hit the target you're hitting. It's the process of the work. It's the work itself that is what you enjoy. It's me right now talking to this camera. This is what I enjoy. It's not what I'm, what I'm doing this for, to get you know, the views, subscribers, whatever. It's about the contribution I get to make. It's about the passion I have of about people and about life and, and helping people have a better life and seeing the change that people get to, to experience in their own worlds, Getting, seeing the change that people get to make. You know, I don't do the work for them. You know, I, I'm happy to help and be the conduit, but at the end of the day, I don't do the work. I get to facilitate a place where they can make their work happen, make the change happen. And see that change. Whew. Nothing's like that. There is no, nothing is close. Nothing is close. And that is the journey. That's why I like doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm telling you that it is the process. So you need to find the thing that, that lights you up like this. So you need to stop aiming at, going back to the very one of the very first things, you just need to stop aiming at false targets. False targets that aren't the thing you want to chase, that aren't what you actually fucking want. So again, the question, what the fuck do you want? What do you really fucking want? What do you want? Do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be in that, that, that movie environment and make movies and do that? Do you want to be a voice actor? Heck, I've got friends that do, that do really good accents and they'd be fantastic at voice acting. Maybe they don't want to do it, maybe it's not their thing, but maybe it is. So why the fuck are they you know, pursuing it? It's about time that you say to yourself, what am I doing with my life? What do I actually want? And aim ferociously at it and fucking goal. Hit it. Hit the goal. Because it's not about the goal itself. It's about doing it and who you grow, how you grow and how you evolve and who you become. It's about the work and enjoying what you do because the journey of the journey to the goal is the goal. The work is the passion. The passion is the work. And that is the path. So find the thing that lights you up. Set a, set a goal. Set a target. Make sure it's not a false target and that you really, 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 really definitely want it for a lot of reasons. Find out why you want it. What purpose do I want to do this? What purpose do I want to do it? What purpose? Really unpack it. Ask yourself, what's the bare minimum I need to achieve? Where am I right now so that I know where I'm aiming to get there and what, what needs to happen? What's the, how many points do I need to score? Like what's enough? How much, how, when do I know I'm there? And what's my bare minimum that I'm willing to walk away from and that I need to achieve? What's the bare minimum I'd be happy with? And then start the journey. Start the journey of learning and growing and becoming better and becoming more of you and living life and being happy and fulfilled and shining brighter than you've shined before. So that's what it's about. So I trust I didn't ramble too much here. I mean, I'm so conscious. I just always feel like I'm rambling because I have no feedback. <laughs> I haven't got anyone I'm talking to. I'm just letting it all out. In a way, me talking here on the camera is more raw and a more true version of me than when I'm talking to somebody because conversation flows and I don't have to keep exploring me to get these things out, which is which is quite funny. So, trust you're enjoying it. Subscribe if you haven't. Like, comment, share, all those things. Share it to somebody that uh, is aiming blindly. Needs a bit of advice on how to shoot their arrows. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.
whenever that is, next week. I'm not too sure. I don't know what episode these are. I don't publish them in the order I record them. So I'll see you in the next one for another exciting conversation, a deep, honest conversation with Jesse Dawson. (laughs) I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.